few years ago, and the, the very few short and sweet pseudo visits I did were really good. And I think the program's even better than it was like four or five years ago when I was here. You know, it seems like you guys are all unpacking in a good way, like you're already with me and like really listening to things. So it's really awesome to be here. Thanks so much for having me. And, um, anyway, uh, I have a lot of slides. I guess I'm old. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> Um, but uh, so I'll just try to go through them and, and um, yeah, it's old school as slides. Remember these? Um, but uh, uh, I'll go through these and then we'll sort of switch when I run out of these to uh, uh, you know digital images. I'm going to just run on a preview slideshow. Hopefully it'll go a little faster that way. Hopefully this will be entertaining for you and I'll save you some. Um, um, you know, maybe by taking you through my journey, I'll, I'll like, save you some time, and, and so you can skip over periods <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, I'm starting with uh, the first images I made when I was at UC Irvine, when I was, like, you know, in your position in a way, uh, your, my first year in grad school. And, you know, I come out in college, but, you know, this was way back in the 20th century in the 80s, and, you know, coming out was Quite as easy as it is now with YouTube and XTube and everybody else being like so free with who they are and, and so on. You know, I, 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 I knew who I was intellectually but or emotionally, and, um, but I, I still had a lot of work to do. I went to UC Irvine, which was at that point just taken over by sort of queer theorists and run by lesbians, and so it was a good place for me. And also the conflict program. Had people like Leotard and Derrida teaching there, so I could get my sort of theory yayas out while making stuff. But this was the early 90s, and a lot of my teachers were the people who were in the notorious 93 biennial uh, that I'm sure you guys all know about. And, you know, I didn't want to make didactic work. I feel like part of the criticism of that biennial was that it was not going to sort of tell you what to think, rather than invite you to think for yourself. Um, you know, maybe necessarily so. I think like postmodernity is obviously super important for you know bringing us outside the hegemonic world of the picture plane and seeing how work operates in a larger world and system. And you know, if you can remember back then, um, it was still a fairly repressive world, and like gay people were just coming out of the art world and people of color, etc. We're just getting uh, recognized as the sort of Julian novels and the other elephants were sort of floating away in the previous recession with the other Bush in office. Uh, but I was thinking about, you know, coming out, I've been out for a while. I, I did these portraits of porn stars. This was a guy named Ty Cash that was in one of the first porn movies I ever saw called Blonde Student Pass. I think. Gosh, I forget what it was. Um, and I was thinking of like the idea of negation. This was I had like four shows when I was in grad show in grad school, and this one was from a show called Not. I was thinking that was sort of ultimate negation. And you know, everybody. I guess back then when people come out there like, oh, I'm not gay. I'm just something else. But I don't know what I am. And it was when queer theory started really coming to prominence, and I love the idea of you know queer being just alternative other, and not necessarily adhering to this weird vocabulary of saying that you're one thing, and and with that loaded you know, uh, power of, of like saying that you're this thing, but all that baggage comes upon you and like, you know, you grow up watching Three's Company and John Ritter, you feel like being gay means that you have to be like that. And I, I knew I wasn't exactly like that, but I didn't know exactly what it was. You know, and I was thinking that, you know, these guys in these porn movies were able to be in this sort of utopic space that where if they would have male male sex without being subjugated or repressed and be able to be free. And yet, at the same time, at that point in time, I don't know if it's changed now, the largest suicide rate amongst teenagers was people who thought that they might be lesbian or gay, and they would kill themselves because they would hate to be that word, whatever that word was. And so, um, this, I did four of these paintings, and th this was on wax, and then you can't really see it, but inscribed in the wax, it says, um, suddenly it occurred to me, this is my life, this is my life, to me, to me, to me, over and over again. I'm trying to find sort of an elusive space between uh, subject matter and emotion, you know, content and sort of synesthetics. Um, this was a, another sort of small body of work that was important to me. These were quotes from the C. Clodi original version of, of Pinocchio. Um, and I put that sort of ink splotch on the right hand side. And being a semiotics major, I was really into the idea of, and still am in a way, of sign versus signifier, you know, and, and the play in between those two things. I mean, I think. 
you know, the main, you know, purpose of, of the sign is the, to acknowledge that's arbitrary, that the sign acknowledges what the signifier is supposed to portray, um, and find that space. And I was thinking about, like, you know, these musicians will have the lyrics of, like, oh, my baby left me and I would feel so bad, and then you hear the twin twang twang of the guitar, and the guitar sort of amplifying with the lyrics, or trying to say, but bringing out a musicality that transcends maybe that, those words. And so, in this one, Pinocchio is saying, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I think what he's really feeling is that splotch in the right-hand side. And I think my whole career, in some ways, is dealing with, like, how do you harness the splotch with the content world of vocabulary? Or, you know, in the world of Pinocchio, he's this guy who, who is born out of wood. Uh, Geppetto's, like, sort of castrated self. And he goes on his merry way, but in order to, you know, be received as the subject, he has to become a speaking subject in a sort of Lacanian way. Um, but he's really abject, he's outside of that symbolic order. Uh, but, you know, once he learns that language, he turns into his own and he's himself. Um, and I want to do my own version of that. I, I did several other shows, I'll show you at the very end of this, some of the drawings I did at that time. But my thesis show was called Pinocchio the Big Fag, and it was sort of based on these ideas and premises. I, I grew up in Colorado, so my main access to art was really the Denver Art Museum, which at that time wasn't very good unless, like Native American art, they had a great Native American art collection and Frederick Remington statues and stuff like that, but, you know, it wasn't so generous in terms of its artistic vocabulary for a kid growing up in a cul sex suburbia in Colorado, and so, my main access to art was really comics, cartoons. Uh, my dad would bring home the New Yorker from the office all the time, and uh, I would be looking at that stuff in Mad Magazine. And in college, I wrote a lot of plays. I was a campus cartoonist. I really thought that that's what I would do my life for my whole life. But I, um, I came here back in the beginning of the last recession. One of my first jobs was working for a contemporary art magazine called Contemporania. It was co-owned by Italians, but our side was a little bit better, so we. Um, the Italians sort of got jealous of us, and, 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 and they were starting to sort of subjugate us, and so we broke apart, and it was a very small staff. I then worked at a Robert Miller Gallery back when it was a really good gallery at the Fuller Building on 57th Street, uh, run by the guys who are now trying to meet. And that really developed my taste for fine art. I realized, like, oh my gosh, you could do this. But the, at that time, I was submitting 10 cartoons a week to the New Yorker. I thought I'd be a cartoonist, and that would be my way to, to make paintings and to write. But then, after working there, I realized, obviously, the freedom that artists had. That wasn't about making a gag every day. It wasn't about making people laugh. And even though I was doing all these comics, I was really into and interested in bringing up ideas aesthetically, which I think is, you know, a basic tenet of post-modernity that's really about the idea first, and then aesthetically bringing out the idea in, in a way that hopefully transcends the, the original, you know, language of the idea and ultimately becomes ineffable or something. And so I realized the freedom of that. And so, you know, I, I worked in a barn in Colorado and came up with some paintings, went to UC Irvine, so sort of the theory and also the fine art possibilities of this new department, but also uh, because it was cheap, because it was a state school. Um, but, you know, at the end of my tenure there, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I, I wrote a play called Pinocchio the Big Fag, and it was like a bad Cole Porter musical, and I, I started out doing a comic of it, but then I realized it was really boring to 